foil, cardboard, and Sharpie markers. However, if you do not have foil, cardboard, and specifically Sharpie markers or some kind of permanent markers, um, then you can just do this on paper and I'll show you sort of the, you know, the alternative way to do this. Um, so this is what's called foil painting. And what we're going to do is we are going to um, work on this piece of art step by step. And remember, if you don't have the materials that I start off showing you, you're still gonna do the exact same steps on paper um, when we start drawing, okay? So you wouldn't just, you wouldn't do the beginning steps where we're actually wrapping the foil on the cardboard. Um, this project is based on a lovely artist named Sandra Silberweig. Um, she does these really cool portraits uh, that don't really look like anybody specifically, but they're very, you know, expressive and stylistic. And uh, this project is going to be assigned to second and third graders, but again, anybody can do it. Um, adults too, have fun. All right, let's go ahead and start talking about materials. So you need a piece of cardboard that looks, you know, like it's from a box. If you can get, you know, get maybe some help cutting that down. If you don't have um, cardboard, uh, you could probably use, I don't know, like maybe just a thicker paper and we'll just see how that goes. And then you need foil. Okay, so you need a sheet of foil and cardboard and you need a paintbrush but it needs to be a really skinny paintbrush so that you're able um, to use sort of the, the, the bottom part of the paintbrush. We want to use this tip right here but you don't want it to be sharp. You want it to feel you know like it's smooth and that it's kind of a skinny tip as well. Okay um, and then you need colored sharpie markers and then also a black sharpie marker. So those are the items you need. And again, if you do not have permanent markers, you can just have regular markers and you can just do white paper and um, a black Sharpie marker or a black uh, permanent pen of some type. Okay, so go ahead and gather your materials. And if you're doing the foil portion with me, then you want to lay your foil down nice and smooth on the surface that you're going to be working on so as smooth as you can and then it's up to you if you want the shiny side to be more if you want the shiny side facing up or down it doesn't really matter they're both going to be shiny and then you put your piece of cardboard right in the center of your foil and you take your foil and you sort of tightly but carefully wrap it around the edge as if you're wrapping a present and then you also need masking tape, okay? If you don't have masking tape and all you can find in your house is just regular uh, tape like this, that's fine too. Um, but be generous with your tape. You don't wanna put too little. You want that every time that you fold a piece down that that tape is gonna secure it all the way, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm gonna pull it just enough to give it a little tug so it's nice and tight, but remember, not so, so tight that you accidentally tear your foil, especially if you're handling it, you know, roughly or on these corners where it very easily can tear because of the sharper edges. And then I'm gonna get my tape to be as wide as that area. And I always begin by sort of putting my tape on the actual piece of foil first and then giving it a little bit of a tug and then I flatten it down and then on our edges here because we don't want the edge foil to be like sticking out off of the sides I'm going to ask you to fold this in a little bit so that now you have a you know a diagonal line rather than a straight line and you're going to do that on all four sides so you'll do it over here as well just a little bit of a small fold on both sides so that now you have your um, your edges facing like this rather than being straight. And then you can go ahead and fold over this side. Again, nice, um, you know, firm fold that is attached nicely to your board. And then a little bit of a tug and then fold that down using the tape. And same thing with this side. 
we're going to fold this over, pull it just a little bit, a little bit of a tug, and then use your piece of tape to secure that final edge there, okay? Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like on the back, and this is what it's gonna look like on the front, nice and flat. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with our drawing, okay? So we're doing something with our paintbrush today that's called repoussé or metal tooling. And this is where, you know, in ancient times they would actually use thin metal sheets that they pounded down with a hammer and then, <laughs> excuse me, and then they would hammer these little chiseled tools into the metal sheets to be able to get them to like raise or come down but this is sort of a play on that idea of metal tooling. So using, oh gosh, <laughs> excuse me again, using your the bottom end of your paintbrush, not, not the bristle side, we're gonna start pushing into our foil gently, okay? Now when I say gently, I mean you wanna be able to see that you're pushing into it, but you want to make sure that you are not pushing so hard that it's gonna tear through the foil. And if it accidentally does tear, just slow down and remember that it's not really gonna show once we add all the colors to it. So I'm gonna start over here by making, by sort of drawing or pushing into the foil to create this round shape, which is going to be our face okay so it's just this bottom and side portion and the rest of the face becomes basically the edges and the this top edge and the two right and left edges okay so that's the face then I'm going to add two lines that come like this and what you're seeing here is me just pushing into the foil which is pushing into the cardboard which is below and if you're seeing these sort of bumpy things it's because cardboard has those like ridges, right, that show up. But that's all part of the process, it's totally fine. Now we're gonna go ahead and create the details um, of the face, okay? So I like to start by coming up here, and sort of doing this top curve that comes down to the middle of the face and creates the nose, okay? Do you guys see how I did that? I started here, I came down, I went over and then up. And then on this side here, I'm just going to add a curve like that to where our nose line is now sort of in the center of these two curves. Then I'm gonna add the eyes. Now this is not supposed to be realistic, obviously. Um, think about like African masks, think about Pablo Picasso's cubism style. These are kind of the things that are inspiring this. So I'm gonna draw one eye over here. And when I say draw, that means I'm just pushing in with my tool. And I'm gonna do another shape over here. And mind you guys, they do not have to be the same size. They can be two different sizes, which is what I'm doing over here. I've got one smaller, one bigger. And then again, at this point in the game, you can add <clears throat> a mouth, and your mouth can be however you want it to be. It can be opened, it can be closed. Um, I'm gonna do a lip like that where I have this part and then this curve down here. And at this point, it's all about just adding designs and details. So you can follow along with me if you want to, or you can just do your own thing. So I'm gonna start by adding a circle inside this eye to make the iris which is the colored part of the eye and I'm going to do these triangles right above the eye that sort of create my lashes and then I'm gonna do some lashes that come all the way down here really exaggerated right but that's what makes this project so cool um, and then I'm gonna come over here and I kind of like what I did on my other piece where I made this eyeball or this uh, iris. I made it into a color wheel. So I split it in half lengthwise vertically 
and then another half right to left horizontally and then in each quadrant I separated it into three sections so they end up with 12 pieces now if you don't end up with 12 pieces that's perfectly fine I'm just doing the color wheel because I think it's kind of fun and then um, I'm gonna do some sort of curly lashes down here now remember this is not a self portrait it is not a picture of you so I say this especially to my boys who are thinking like what I'm doing is maybe too girly it doesn't really matter because it's not a picture of you if you want it to be you then you can look in a mirror and try to use some of your own facial features and adapt them into the style that's totally fine okay so I'm just gonna keep adding patterns keep adding patterns and the most important thing is that you have a variety of things happening inside your patterns so I did this sort of curved half circle all the way through but then I did something a little bit different in each of them and then I'm gonna do these like vertical lines up until I get here and then I'm gonna just keep going around these curves basically using the same kind of curve okay then I'm gonna add some wavy lashes on this side and notice you guys that as I'm drawing I'm really making sure that everything I draw ends on another line or begins on the line so that everything becomes a closed shape okay so I'm gonna do that to kind of add another element to my nose and then I'm gonna do these curved lines here on the cheek that are connected to those long lashes and then I'm gonna do a repeated circle shape and I'm really not pushing hard which is why my foil is not tearing so one of the things when I've done this with students before is if you tear your foil one time you will never do it again because you have now learned how hard you shouldn't push versus what's okay all right so for my neck I'm gonna do this sort of zigzaggy thing remember you do not have to look exactly like mine ultimately it's up to you if you want to create some stuff copy some of my stuff that's fine um, over here you can do whatever you want on my original one I added um, these sort of circular circle kind of curl things and that's what sort of made it me is that I have curly hair so I just went through here and it doesn't even have to have anything to do with hair you guys it can be whatever you want it to be ultimately it can just be a background it can just be you know straight sort of zigzag strands that you then turn into these sort of stripes if you're a boy and you want to make it hair that's your hair then you just adjust it down here how you want or it's just not hair at all it can just simply be a cool design that you repeat does that make sense all right so here we are I'm almost done you see what I just did there I just poked through my foil and that was because I was closer to an edge and there must have been a little section there that was like sunk into the cardboard and so when I pushed it broke through but guess what no big deal because ultimately once you add all your decoration it's not even going to show up it's not going to be obvious okay so at this point you're just going to start coloring so you're going to those lines that you have there with your foil you can either use them as your guides and then you know color things in in between first or you can choose to use if you want to be able to see more clearly if you're having trouble seeing you can go ahead and use your black sharpie to go right on top of all those areas that you marked with your the edge of the pencil I mean the edge of the um, paintbrush you can literally just go right over them trace right on top of those 
areas that sort of dug into the foil. All right, and you can just do all of that on the whole thing. And remember guys, if you're doing this on paper, it's the exact same steps. Just don't, you know, just ignore the beginning where I'm applying the foil to the cardboard. You can just do the drawing with me on regular paper and you'll be set to go. Okay, so there we go, there we go. I'm just tracing over all my areas that I used my paintbrush on. And I'm tracing over them. And again, I am not making anything up here. I am following exactly what I already did. So at this point, I'm not really inventing anything new. I'm simply mirroring what I already have. And then once you've done that, um, then you can start adding color, okay? So the going over it with black Sharpie is going much faster because you already have your drawing there. And so you sort of are just following it, right? You're not having to um, create anything new. But like I said, you can either choose to add your colors first and then outline everything with your black Sharpie, um, or you can do what I'm doing, which I personally prefer to do the black first because it helps me see everything more clearly. And sometimes the shine from the foil can um, create some hindrance to you actually seeing things more easily. Make sure you're you know, sitting in good light so that you're able to actually see everything that you're doing. And here's my mouth. And let's say you've done something and you don't like the way it looks. You can simply take your finger and sort of rub it away and then readjust by redoing your the tip of your um, paintbrush to reestablish the line that you actually want, okay? That is how you do that. So while you're doing this, also I want you to remember not to have your fingers and your hands all over your picture. If you notice, I'm only holding it from one edge, on the very edge, because if you get your fingers all over the foil, um, your fingers, fingers will release you know, oil from your skin, and that makes it difficult for the Sharpie to actually stay um, on the foil. So try to not touch it with your fingers too much. Um, and if you actually need to hold it, like support it, you can always sort of support it with a piece of paper like that that you put your, that you rest your hand on, okay? So I'm gonna stop outlining there and just do a little bit of coloring with you. And then I'm gonna stop and you guys are going to finish yours all by yourself, okay? Now, you don't need to push hard when you use the Sharpie markers. They just glide right on, okay? Sometimes a color on the foil is gonna appear a lot lighter than it appears, you know, on the actual pencil cap, um, on the actual marker cap. Like if you look at it, it's a really subtle green and that's totally fine, okay? That is totally, totally fine. It's all about variety, right? So you want light and dark of colors. Um, if you wanted to do this in just black and white, that's fine too, but then I would suggest actually coloring things in, sort of having a pattern of black and white so that it's essentially silver and black, but you've colored everything in. And I'm gonna outline that with that. And we just go around and keep going. So I'm choosing to leave this part, the silver of the eye, around the iris because I'm kind of treating it like the white of our eye that is around, that surrounds the um, iris. So I'm just gonna leave that silver. And as you work through this, you can certainly leave some areas of the foil just totally showing, you know, like it's silver, like it's just part of your design. So you just keep coloring, you keep coloring, you keep coloring, and when you're done, you end up with this marvelous foil painting that just looks so you know, so intriguing to look at, right? It's beautiful, it's colorful, it's interesting. Um, and then 
you can see here on the right and the left where I might have supported it with my fingers a little bit and that rubbed off a little bit there but it's no big deal because all you have to do is go you can just go back and, and just color in those areas again as needed and that is it my friends this is the end of the project I hope that you enjoy this and I'm so excited to see um, what you do with this project all right I'll see you guys next week bye